It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Most Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Levin. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes buckaroos. They're great. Now, our story for tonight, it's called The Boiling Treasure Chest. At the far northern end of Paradise Valley, where the majestic Starlight Mountains slope down to meet the stark, rocky shapes of Crater Canyon, there's a tiny settlement of squatters. These few families live apart from the rest of the world, coming in contact with civilization only at times of sheer necessity. But vague rumors of gold and of trouble have reached Mineral City, and as Roy, Dale, and Pat ride to investigate, a grim scene is taking place behind the door of one of the rough-hewn cabins. This is only one sack. Where's the rest of the gold dust? There isn't any more. Get out of here now. Mrs. Clark told you that's all. I know Ernie Clark made three trips to the mountains with the others this year, and I know what he found. Well, we can't argue with a pair of forty-fives, Mrs. Clark. If there is any more, you'd better... Wait. I hear something. Look out the window, Mrs. Clark. What do you see? No funny business now. There's dust and three riders coming. We didn't send for help, mister. We didn't know... Quiet. I'm leaving for now. Don't try to take the gold out of this cabin. I'll be back, and if you're not here, I'll find you. I swear I'll find you. I want every grain of dust Ernie Clark has panned. Roy, that rider's certainly in a hurry. You bet. He slammed the cabin door and headed off like he was shot from a cannon. Well, if you hadn't have made me leave Nellie Bell back on the road there and ride this confounded Jerry horse, we could overhaul him in a matter of minutes. With the start he has, it would take even Trigger longer than that to catch him, Pat. Let's talk to the people in the cabin. Hip there, Trigger. Come on, boy. Ah, come on, Buttermilk. Well, all right, Jerry. Get yourself into a gallop like them other horses are doing. Come on, Pat. Keep up with it. Jerry's not so slow, Pat. It's all in the way you handle him. Uh, well, maybe I don't know where his carburetors are. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, oh, oh, boy. You know, you know, we're making a powerful lot of noise. What if there's trouble inside? We should have snuck up here quiet-like. Well, there's no particular reason for that, Pat. I like to operate in the open, even when I don't know what I'm looking for. Hmm. Nobody home, eh? Maybe that rider was hurrying to keep an appointment with his girlfriend. Well, Dale, he wasn't exactly dressed for it. You know, a man doesn't usually wear a mask when he goes to call on a lady. No, <laughs> not unless it's a costume party, and they'd hardly be having one of those in this little squatter settlement. Did you see a mask on him? Roy, you got the sharpest eyes. Well, I'm just in the habit of using them, Dale. No answer. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to look inside. Oh, the masked man has partners. Well, this time you can talk to my shotgun. Uh, oh, hey, lady. Hey, we're awfully sorry, ma'am. No one answered our knock, and we thought there might be trouble. There's been trouble, and this time we're ready for you. Uh, quiet there, Bullet. Quiet, Bullet. Yeah, one thing we don't want is trouble. But we sure seem to gravitate toward it. Ma'am, we're certainly not outlaws. We only want to help... I'm warning you. One step closer and I'll pull the trigger. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Clark. Mister, aren't you Roy Rogers? That's right. I run the Double R Bar Ranch down near Mineral City. And these are my friends, Dale Evans and Pat Brady. But the masked man said he'd be back. He's he... all right, Mrs. Clark. 
Well, if Mr. Olborn says the so... The sheriff asked us to ride up here just to make a sort of check on things, and I guess it's pretty lucky we've come. <laughs> I ain't so sure about that. Uh, lady, would you mind putting down that shotgun? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, suppose you tell us what happened. Pat and I have been deputized, and we all want to help you. I'm Willis Oborn, Mr. Rogers. I'm a friend of Mrs. Clark and her husband and his partners. A masked bandit broke into the cabin and took... Uh, is it all right to tell him, Mr. Oborn? Well, I think so, Mrs. Clark. We've heard about Roy Rogers, even way up here. You can certainly trust us, Mrs. Clark. Uh, what did the bandit take? He took some of the gold. Gold? Yes, the men in our settlement have found a little gold in the mountain streams. They've been panning it for two or three weeks at a time. While the weather's good, bringing the dust down, dividing it, and then going back for more. But while they've been away this last time, every cabin in the settlement's been rifled by the masked man. Don't you go up to the mountains to pan gold with your neighbors, Mr. Oburn? Well, I did, Rogers, but this trip I couldn't. You see, my hand isn't much use to me right now. I scalded it very badly. And oh, it... yes, I see. It's all bandaged up. Boy, it sure is. Well, you could practically hide a gold panning outfit in that big bandage. Well, a band that doesn't have much of a start on us. Say, Pat, let's go after him. Oh, would you? Dale, you better stay here with Mrs. Clark. The band had threatened to return, and from the looks of Mr. Oburn's hand, you might be better in an emergency than he would. Oh, I would have been all right, except that he took us by surprise. I know, Mr. Oburn, but Dale's a mighty handy person to have around. Let's go, Pat. <laughs> Roy, I don't see how you follow these tracks. I can hardly see them. Well, if you look closely, you can make out nicks in the sandstone. And bullets could help, too. He knows what we're after. He sure seems to. Hey, watch how he runs ahead there and then waits for us to catch up. Yeah. Hey, why do you suppose the masked man headed for this country? You know, these big rocks and these darn geysers throwing steam in the air? Man, this would be an awful place to live. But it's a pretty good place to hide, Pat. Well, I sure wouldn't want to be in the way when the water squirts. You know, like they say in Mexico, muy caliente. <laughs> Easy now, Trigger. Hey, Pat, look. Bullets follow the trail right to that big depression in the rocks. Well, by golly, I see the tracks myself now. They do lead right into that hole. Oh, there, Trigger. Ho, oh, boy. Ho, oh. oh, Jared. Ho. Oh. Pat, look. Look at this. The masked man must have ridden his horse right down into that rock depression. Oh, you're kidding, Roy. <laughs> what you're calling a rock depression is the basin of a great big geyser. See the steam coming out? Well, just the same, a horse has been ridden into the basin. Yes, sir. There are the nicks from the shoes. Hey, don't go any further, Roy. If that water gushed up all of a sudden, wowie! Well, this sort of a geyser gives plenty of warning, Pat. Listen, you can hear it now. It's going to erupt soon. Hear that water boiling? Roy, come back. Come back here. Well, don't you worry, Pat. I'm coming back. Come on, bullet trigger. We'd all better get back. Hey. Oh, Roy, th that's really pressing your luck. Peeking right into the geyser just before she erupts? Well, I had to, Pat. We set out to follow that masked bandit, and I'm sure that he rode down into that crater. Hey, watch that geyser now. Here she comes. A sure thing. It's really boiling. Well, this ought to be a safe distance. Hey, almost to the surface now. Yeah. Now the next one should be a big one. There it goes. Suffering scallywags. Wow, she boiled up 50 feet in the air. Hey, you really think the bandit was down in that hole, Roy? Well, I'm sure he went down there. Then <laughs> no one has to worry about him anymore. His goose is cooked. Or I should say boiled. Somehow I don't think so, Pat. A lot of gold's been stolen. And the masked man told Mrs. Clark and Oburn that he'd be back. And I think we'd better head for that cabin fast. How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts? Place? How about those great nuts? Place? How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts? Place? They are so good, good for you, too. The two minute energy works for you. So, how about them? How about them? How about great nuts? Place? Yep, how about those great nuts? Place? 
Steak and Old Hands advise partners, tomorrow when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy-given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar-roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. Roy Rogers and Pat Brady follow a masked bandit who has stolen gold dust from the Paradise Valley squatters to the very edge of a steaming geyser. The geyser erupts and Pat believes that their search has ended. But Roy insists that they have not seen the last of the outlaw. They hurry back to the cabin to which the bandit has promised to return and where Dale, Mrs. Clark, and squatter Willis Oborn await them. Do you really mean it, Roy? You mean the bandit rode right into the crater of a boiling geyser? Well, tracks don't lie, Dale. Well, if that really did happen, Rogers, then the rest of Mrs. Clark's gold is safe. Well, I'm not so sure of that, Oborn. I think he'll be back, and soon. Do you have any idea who he is? Well, Rogers, uh, there's a fellow named uh, Paris moved into these parts shortly after we started going to the mountains to pan for gold. Uh, I sort of think he's the masked bandit. But we can't prove it, Mr. Oburn. The men have searched his cabin, but we've never found any of the dust. Well, now that your men are finding gold, you ought to move in closer to civilization. Yeah, I want to, Miss Evans. Well, try not to be frightened now, ma'am, but I uh, think your visitor's coming back. What? Yes, there's a masked man riding up. See him way off there? Well, you'll protect us, won't you, Mr. Rogers? Well, I'll try, and I'll try to recover the rest of your gold, too. Well, how are you going to do that? Uh, why don't you meet him at the door and take him captive? Because I'm not so sure he's working alone. Now, listen closely. Pat's hidden outside with my dog and our horses. Mrs. Clark, you and Mr. Oburn stay here. And when the bandit comes, show him where the rest of the gold's hidden. What? But, Mr. Rogers, I... I want you to trust me. Dale and I will be right behind the door at the far end of the room. I told you I'd come back. This time I want all the dust. I think I recognize you, masked man. It'll go hard with you if you're who I think you are. That's enough of the gab. Tell me where it's hidden. I'll tell you one thing about myself. I got a mighty itchy trigger finger. You better tell him, Mrs. Clark. The gold is under the floor, under the fourth board from the wall. That's better. Now stay where you are. Don't move, either of you. I got eyes in the back of my head. Well, they're mighty poor eyes, fellas. Hey, uh, Straighten up and give me those shooting uh, irons. What? Where did you come? Never mind where I came I, from. There. Uh, Hold his guns, Dale. Right, Roy. I've got him. Now, let's see what you look like with your mask off. Wait, right, Paris. There. Well, you were right, Mr. Oburn. I suspected you, Paris. We all did. I'll get even with you. You're not getting even with anyone right now because... Oh! There. He won't be out for long. I just clipped him a medium-sized one. If that's what you call medium-sized, Roy. Oh, man. Now, is there any place in the settlement to hold this man until we can get Pat's Jeep up here and take him back to civilization? Uh, let me take charge of him, Rogers. Uh, my cabin's just across the clearing. Uh, let me march him over there with his own pistols in his back. It'll serve him right. But your bandaged hand, Mr. Oborn. Are, are you sure you can manage? I can manage. I have a score to settle with this fellow, too. Well, if you say so. Come on, you. Get up. Uh, You're all right. Uh, I never thought I'd run into a trap. Never thought my own... Quiet, Paris. Get started. One false move and I'll use your own guns on you. Open the door for him, Dale. Sure, Roy. Go on now. Move along, Paris. I'm locking you in my cabin. <sighs> Thank you for saving the gold, Mr. Rogers. But wouldn't it have been easier to have stopped him outside? Oh, I was so frightened. I'm sorry to have frightened you, ma'am, but I had a reason for handling it this way. A reason? What was it? <laughs> That's it. Hello, you horse. Hey, Mr. Oburn, what happened? Well, he, he made a fast move on me. Uh, knocked me down. Took his guns and ran. Trigger, come here, boy. Hey, Pat, get up here with the horses and bullet, quick. Good boy, Trigger. Hurry up, Pat. Uh, uh, here I am, Roy. 
Here's buttermilk, Dale. Mrs. Clark, Oburn, do you have horses? Yes, we do. Well, saddle up as quickly as you can and follow us. Dale, you and Bullet stick with them. Well, Roy, where are you going? To Crater Canyon. Hurry. Bullet will help you find the way. We'll go on ahead. This is one time when I'd rather be on my horse like you are. You just hang on to that rope for dear life, Pat. If Trigger should slip or I should fall, hang on twice as hard. Easy now, Trigger boy. You can make it. But, Roy, we're going right down into the geyser itself. Sure, this winding path leads right down the side of the crater. But all that steam, why don't we burn up? It's coming up from the center. We're safe as long as we stay close to the side. Oh, that boiling water's only about 70 feet down. You just hang on to that rope, Pat. Look, an opening off the path leading away from the crater. Right here, look. Well, I'll be darned. A regular tunnel leading off and down. This must be where Paris went. Keep going, Trigger. You can go anywhere a criminal's horse can go. Oh, this confounded tunnel must come up again someplace away from the geyser. Say, you know that masked man was a plenty smart cookie. It's never smart to be an outlaw, Pat. Look, we're getting into a sort of a cave, and right beyond it, the path seems to lead upward again. See, there's daylight 20 or 30 yards ahead. Hey, Roy, the bandit, he heard us. Roy, he sees us. Hey, down fast, Roy, you're a sitting duck. Back, Trigger, get back, boy. Stay low, Pat. Paris is going to try to make a break for it. Maybe I can just sort of wing him. Hey, you got him, Roy. You got him. Hurry, Pat. We've got to get to him before he starts shooting again. Harris must hide the gold down here and times his trip so he can come in and get out again between the geysers' eruptions. Yeah, we better time ourselves, too, Roy. we got to get out of here before that thing boils up again. Oh, here he is, Pat. Oh. Hey, Roy, oh. he's hurt. He's more scared than anything oh. else. I just creased his wrist enough to stop him. Help. Help me out of here before the geyser boils us alive. Then talk fast, Paris. Oh. The squatter's gold dust is hidden down here. Where? The gold. It's behind the big rock in the wooden box. Take a look, Pat. Yeah. You better will, Roy. I'm as anxious to get out of here as he is. You aren't in this alone, Paris. Somebody's telling you which of the squatters had gold. Who's your party? I'll tell you. I'll tell you, but, but let's get out of here first. Hey, the gold's there all right, Roy. Eight, nine, ten bags of it. All right, Pat. Help me lift Paris on his horse. Stay where you are. All of you. Huh? You're covered. Well, hollering, hoot nannies. How did that Auburn feller get down here without us hearing him? Simple enough, through the opening up ahead there. This tunnel leads to a hiding place in the scrub a few hundred yards from the geyser. So you're in on this, too. You're responsible for stealing your neighbor's gold. I can live the rest of my life on the dust I have down here. We'll see about that, Auburn. You'll never see about anything again. Walk back, all three of you. Back down toward the cavern. Oh, what's he going to do with this, Roy? I have an idea what he's going to try to do. And right now, he has the drop on us. Now, stand against this rock. And thanks for the use of your rope, Rogers. Auburn, you're not tying me down here with them. You came in handy, Paris, while my hand was scalded. But my hand's fine now. I've kept the bandage on because it was simpler to have the other men do the mining and you to do the dirty work. Can't even play fair with your own partner, eh, Auburn? If you're going to give me a lecture, make it short, Rogers. The geyser will erupt again in just about two minutes, and I'm leaving now. I'll take your horse, Paris. He's a valuable animal. Roy, that noise. Yeah, it's the beginning of the eruption, Pat. Remember how we heard the water boiling up higher and higher until it exploded right out of the ground? It'll fill this cave when it gets near the top. But can't you do something? Roy... Oh, yeah, I can't budge these ropes. We're tied tighter than steers at Brandon time. Well, we're going to get out. My horse is still down here. Oh, what good will a horse do? The water will boil over us in 60 seconds. Trigger, come here, boy. Over here, Trigger. Trigger, my hands. The ropes, fella. Get them off. Get them off, boy. Get them off fast. Time for another Roy Rogers reminder. Always play fair. Yes, buckaroos, that's Roy's reminder for today. To be a good, upstanding citizen, you have to abide by the rules in everything you do, in your home, in school, or on the playground. It's a fact when you play fair, you can't go wrong. 
Be fair to yourself, too. Keep yourself healthy and strong. And talking about that, one of the best ways to do it is to eat plenty of good, nourishing food like Grape Nuts Flakes, the cereal Roy likes best for building up strength and energy. Yes, kids, Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Roy likes those swell-tasting Grape Nuts Flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you just two minutes after you eat a big, multi-rich bowlful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you like sugar-roasted Grape Nuts Flakes. They have a flavor that's multi-rich, makes them mighty good to eat. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals, guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Roy and Pat capture the masked bandit who has been taking the squatter's gold in a cavern off the crater of a steaming geyser. But Oborn, revealing himself as the true criminal, surprises our friends and his former henchmen and leaves them bound hand and foot as the geyser once again starts to push its boiling water toward the surface. Oh, where can they be? Where can they be? Well, now, don't worry, Mrs. Clark. Pat's horse is out here, and from the way Bullet acts, Roy and Pat and Trigger all went down into the crater of the geyser. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, well, I'm afraid it's hopeless, Miss Evans. Yes, I've searched the brush and the rocks for hundreds of yards around. There's no sign of Rogers or Brady or the outlaw. Afraid they must have fallen into the geyser. Quiet, Bullet. Roy didn't fall in, Mr. Oborn. He rode in on purpose. But I'm responsible. He did it to help me. Now, you've just got to stop worrying. Roy Rogers always knows exactly what he's doing. Now, if he rode into that crater, he'll ride out again, some way. Yeah, water will reach the surface the next time. Don't you come back. Uh, it's too late now. The entire cavern of the geyser is flooded with boiling water. And Rogers and Brady and Paris were down there. <laughs> Mr. Oborn, how can you laugh? Because all the gold that your husband and his friends ever found belongs to me. What? Don't struggle. You either, Mrs. Clark. I have my guns on you. Why? Why, the bandage. It's off your hands. I have complete use of my hands. And the next thing I'm going to do is to tie the two of you and leave you here on the rim of the geyser. It'll erupt again in two hours. Miss Evans, oh. look, coming out from behind the geyser. Oh, it's Roy and Pat and Trigger with another man lying across the saddle. Roy, hurry! Well, it can't be. Bullet, get him! Down, Mrs. Clark, down! Take care of his hands, Bullet, until Roy gets here. I've got his feet. Great work, Dale. Let go now, Bullet. Let go, boy. Now take over. Roy, be careful. His guns. Uh, you've got two good hands, haven't you, Obert? But I don't think you can hang on to those guns with them. <laughs> Oh, my wrist! Stop it. Takes care of the guns. Now let's see what happens to your jaw. Hey, don't finish him off before I get there, Roy. I want to crack at him, too. I'm sorry, Pat. He folded just a little too fast. When he comes to again, you can go to work on him because I think he has a little more coming. I don't think you'll be coming to very soon. You could scarcely call that last punch a medium-sized one. Well, your goal is safe, Mrs. Clark. Yours and all that has been stolen from your friends. We'll get it as soon as the cavern cools off. As soon as the cavern cools off? Well, what do you mean? Roy, where were you and Pat when that geyser erupted? If it hadn't been for Trigger, we would have been in a tunnel just off the crater. Oh. Well, here's your chance, Pat. Oburn's going to get up. Oh, no, he's just rolling over for another nap. Oh, darn. Well, I'll wait. Mr. Rogers... If Mr. Brady can't handle him alone, I'm a pretty husky old gal, you know. <laughs> Mrs. Clark, I don't blame you. Well, I don't either. But you let the law handle Oburn in Paris. It's time you started enjoying life. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you. 
until we meet again. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Remember what Roy Rogers says, Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Roy's right, fellas and gals, as a cereal it's dandy, with milk or cream. For snacks it's so handy, or you can eat it like candy right out of the box. Post Sugar Crisp is excitingly new, deliciously different. Nourishing puff tweet, candy coated with honey and sugar. Ask Mom to get Post Sugar Crisp in the big red, white, and blue box with the three bears on the front tomorrow. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Gwen Delano, Frank Gersel, and Junius Matthews. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.